could not be here. He actually is accompanying a member at a press conference on Capitol Hill urging action on the highway bill. So I'm going to cover this presentation for him and we'll hopefully do an adequate job here. So for this webinar, we'd like to go through the AAG um, AD priorities update, just a brief update on AD's legislative priorities to give you guys a little background. I know many of you were in town a couple weeks ago for the AD fly-in, so this will be pretty familiar to you guys, but others um, I know on the call were not able to join us, so we'll go through some of AAD's priorities. We put together a year of action calendar for AAG members, um, and it's basically one activity a month to kind of keep everyone engaged and uh, move the policy and engagement process along, and we'll go through some of the immediate tasks on the AAG calendar as we've developed it, and then some follow-up items and dates for your calendar, some dates to mark down now so that you can uh, make sure to join us at various events um, throughout the rest of this year and next year, to, um, particularly meetings for AAG members. So AD's priorities, obviously highway program is still a big deal, um, trying to bring certainty to the federal highway program. Right now it looks like we're going to be in another phase of um, extension, short-term extensions. Uh, the federal highway program, program expired at the end of May. Congress extended it for two months till the end of July. And at the end of July also coincides with, with when the highway trust fund won't have enough money in it to support um, to support current investment levels. So, at the end of July, we're looking at kind of a day of reckoning of sorts when Congress has to find new money as well as extend the highway program. And um, really, what's going to happen at that time is kind of anybody's guess. My guess is that they're going to extend the program until the end of the year and try to find enough money to do a multi-year bill at that point. But others are putting the pressure on to try to get a multi-year bill and enough money for a multi-year bill in um, at the end of at the end of July. So we'll see what happens. AADs um, keeps pushing to try and provide some long-term certainty here in the um, immediate future and to uh, fully fund even increase investment levels to um, provide certainty to equipment distributors. Water infrastructure, we've um, the the Clean Water and Drinking Water State Revolving Funds, the primary funding mechanism for the federal government for water infrastructure, has um, been cut drastically over the last uh, several years to the tune of about 30 percent. So private private investment is really what we're looking at on the water side, at least at the federal level. And there's legislation out there to, to eliminate the volume cap on private activity bonds for water projects to attract more private investment. Um, essentially, these are municipal bonds, and by taking water infrastructure out of the cap, the federally mandated cap that's there, will allow more private investment to get to invest in these projects. Estimates are there's about $5 billion annually in private investment sitting out there that wants to invest in rebuilding our nation's water infrastructure, but right now isn't investing because of the cap. That, that legislation, the H.R. 499, that's a House bill and Senate in, um, introduction should be coming very shortly. Taxes, um, tax reform seems to be not um, not as likely as um, it, as we once thought, uh, just given the political dynamics, um, the fact that President Obama only wants to proceed with business only reform but won't touch individual rates, and Congress seems pretty um, dead set as does uh, the broader business community that if we're going to do corporate tax reform, we should also be doing individual tax reform as well. So the main focus on taxes right now are these capital investment incentives such as Section 179, increased Section 179 levels and 50% depreciation, bonus depreciation. Um, as you know, those expired at the end of last year. So we're working with, uh, in coalition here in D.C. with other business groups as well as construction groups to permanently reinstate those higher Section 179 levels, as well as 50% bonus depreciation. So year after year, we don't have to wait for Congress to act at the last minute on these important tax investment um, incentives. Energy is still a big issue for many of our members around the country. Uh, top priorities there are obviously approve the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, right now, that's kind of caught in 
the administration, that the ball's kind of in the administration's court on approving the pipeline or disproving the pipeline. Congress is both the House and Senate have passed bills. They both attempted to override the veto, the Obama's veto of their bills. Um, but, you know, there's not enough, there's not a super majority in Congress right now who support the Keystone XL pipeline. So it's really, it's really in the president's court to either approve or disprove the pipeline. We're hoping to have an answer sometime this year on that. Um, and also a newer issue that we're focus, focusing on is repealing the crude oil export ban. The ban's been in place since, I believe, the early 70s. Um, and we have all this crude oil here and we're unable to export it. So this is something that a lot of the um, our members in Texas and energy producing states have asked that we, we push and we're leading coalitions trying to get the crude ex oil export ban approved. Regulatory, um, the administration's been using their regulatory powers to circumvent Congress. Some, so some policies that they couldn't get through Congress, they're now using the uh, rulemaking process, which is very, very hard and difficult to stop, as well as um, hard to undo. So there are a number of different things going on, especially at EPA, involving, um, for example, climate change rule, uh, track climate change rules, as well as this WOTUS rule, which we mentioned here, which is the waters of the U.S. And they, EPA just finalized the rule on this waters of the U.S., which essentially drastically expands the Clean Water Act's jurisdiction and EPA's jurisdiction over basically any body of water in, in the United States, in the United States requiring permitting and all that stuff, halting development if you're even near a body of water. And what they define as a body of water could go as far as a ditch, a uh, seasonal pond, for example. Um, a, um, so it's just a very broad rule and could have a, we, we expect will have a significant impact on development. And there's legislative efforts to repeal the rule, to force EPA to come back to the table, meet with all interested stakeholders and draft a new rule. And there's also other proposals that would actually prevent the EPA, pr take funding away from EPA's enforcement of that particular rule. So that's a primary regulatory issue that we're following. As I said, it's just one of a number, though, of things we're expecting out of the, uh, the administration here in the next couple of, um, as the next year or so, as they, yes, a year and a half while they're still in power. And then workforce development. That's an issue that we've kind of waded in over the last couple of, um, last uh, couple months um, that we really made a focus of our public policy efforts. And one um, issue that we're focusing on is Perkins Act reauthorization and really enhancing the employer role in workforce education. So making sure that, um, that technical schools and community colleges are producing the students that employers actually need and allowing more flexibility at a local level to determine those sorts of, make those kind of decisions. So, Workforce has also been a top priority for us, and we'll continue to advocate for that, given the skilled technical work, worker shortage in our industry. So year of action. So we put together this calendar, and the purpose is to provide equipment industry grassroots leaders with a game plan to enhance the effectiveness and elevate political visibility for you, your company, and your industry. So that's the purpose of this, of the AAG and this calendar. We've assumed a couple things. You're connected and respected, so you, members of Congress hear from Christian and I all the time here in D.C., but you're the ones, you're the business owners, the executives, the people that um, are creating the jobs and they need, to, they need to hear from you and they value your input. We've also assumed that your time is valuable. Um, so we, there are activities that we, I'll lay out here, are shouldn't take very much time at all. They should be very easy. We're here to make it as easy as possible on you as you um, go through these activities. And we're standing by to assist you in any way you can. We want this to be the least burdensome on you and your time as possible. We know you're busy. And we also assume you want to make a difference in the most efficient and, effect and effective way possible. Same, similar thing. We know you want to make a difference, and we want to make this as easy, as quick, and as effective as possible. So moving on to June, so 
June action item is to make an industry grassroots contact list. And what we're asking you to do is to develop email, an email contact list of 10 or more industry peers to receive government affairs related communications. We're not asking you to turn that list over to us. We're just asking you to compile it, to have that there on your desktop. Um, this could include lists, could include other dealers in your area, dealers in the same line, manufacturers, just other contacts from other dealerships, from other um, companies that can be included on government affairs related emails. We recommend you put the list in Excel format and make it easily accessible. So put it on your, for example, your computer desktop under in an AAG folder of some sort. That's just one um, one option. We're standing by if there's a dealer, say, in your local area or in your line, and you don't in, that sells the same line of equipment, and they don't you don't know their contact info or you don't have a primary contact. We're happy to provide that to you through either the Washington office or our regional managers. Um, so this is, um, and this is really meant to use, so what we're going to do over the course of the year as we go through the list, you'll see there are certain activities that we're going to ask you to push the activity out to, or push the request, or push a, uh, inf information or action alerts out to more people to kind of spread the word and get more people, more distributors, more industry people involved on our adv advocacy efforts. So that's, um, that's what we're asking you to do this month is to make this list to create this industry grassroots contact list. And as I said, we don't need to see it. We just hope you'll, you'll do it um, and so that you can pat, spread the word throughout the year on all the stuff that we're doing and get more people involved on AAG activities. So just to briefly go through the other, um, the other activities so you have kind of a heads up of what's coming in the immediate future. So July, we're going to do extend an August recess congressional visit invitation. So work with AD's Washington office and AD's regional manager team to extend an invitation for a lawmaker to visit your facility or multiple lawmakers to visit multiple facilities. We're standing by to determine, um, to, to help you determine which lawmaker would be best fit for your area, for your issues um, based on you know, committee assignments or um, interest in transportation and such, or familiarity with the industry, so we're happy to help identify these particular targets. Um, we're happy, and we're going to work with you on determining the scope of the meeting. Will will the visit be with just your employees? Will it include local dealers? Will it include customers? I mean, that's really all up to you. We have been uh, doing a number of these facility visits now uh, throughout the spring, and we've been encouraging and a lot of. Um, AD members to invite all their customers and local dealers, and it's been some of these have had a lot of people at them and a lot of kind of strong industry support. So it's uh, so, but we, you know we'll do it however you feel comfortable, and we're happy to tailor it to to your uh, your needs and desires. We'll make it as easy as possible. We'll draft the invite, contact info. We'll get the we have all the contact info. We'll put the request in motion, and we'll really make this as painless on you as possible. So the first step will be just toward, toward working with regional managers and the Washington office on identifying a particular um, lawmaker or candidate and, have, and then the invitation, we'll take care of the invitation and we'll kind of work all, all that stuff out. Not much of a burden on AAG members. And also in July, we're also going to focus on AAD's PAC. Um, we're going to ask all dealer members of the AAG to contribute to the PAC, as well as encourage others to do so. Um, we'd also like to work with you to determine who on their grassroots list, which is the June action item, has given prior approval. Because um, we can't ask for PAC contributions unless the AAD member has given, signed a form essentially, solicitation consent saying they can be solicited for PAC contributions. So we, um, and then we'll draft notes for you guys to send to your other, to your contact list to encourage them to give to AED PAC or at least if not give to the PAC itself at least uh, sign solicitation consent so that we can ask, so we can kind of educate them on what the PAC does and the importance of AED PAC to support uh, the campaigns of the, um, of those who are biggest champ best champions on Capitol Hill. So. Looking forward to August, um, the action item is going to be host a facility visit. So hopefully in July, 
we get all these invitations in, in motion and we're able to host these facility visits. Um, visits go about an hour and a half. Uh, it's a great opportunity to introduce the lawmaker to your executive team and to um, some of your employees. Brief the lawmaker about the company, history, and customer industries. And then talk about some of the major policy, policy issues that affect you, um, such as highways, water investment, tax policy, environmental regs, et cetera. I mean, I would say focus on one, two, three major issues and kind of hammer those home. Uh, take the lawmaker on a company tour. Let him or her talk to employees, shake some hands, and sit on some equipment. And be sure to take lots of pictures, both for our publications so that we can get, you know, kind of put it out there as a best practice, give your company that visibility um, within the industry, as well as these lawmakers, they love sitting on, they love the backdrop of the heavy construction equipment. They really enjoy and never forget, actually, when they have the opportunity to sit on pieces of equipment, to see it up front. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, these big toys to them. So they, um, it's really important to kind of have that visual there, and they really don't, when they come back to D.C. and I talk to the members of Congress who have been out to member facilities, they really don't forget that tour of um, AD members' facilities. So, And then also an action item for August is going to be to register for AD's Executive Forum. And in conjunction with the Executive Forum, we're going to have the fall AAG meeting. So, the, uh, so make sure you register for that and mark that on your calendar. I believe the next slide we have the details on the Executive Forum. So Executive Forum will be in or the Executive Forum will be in Chicago at the in Schaumburg on September 23rd to 25th. The host facility is Renaissance Schaumburg Convention Center Hotel. And the AG meeting right now is going to be from 3 to 5 p.m. on Wednesday, September 23rd. So at the beginning of, uh, of Executive Forum. So September action item is to attend Executive Forum. Um, meeting agenda is still being developed, but if there are specific topics that you'd like to discuss or like to have addressed, whether it's policy issues or how to, um, you know, for example, how to effectively engage Congress or how to host a facility visit or how to, um, you know, advocate on industry's behalf, we're happy to add that to the agenda and address that. Um, or if there's any policy issues that we haven't been touching on, um, for example, highway bill's not a big deal for you, but maybe there's another market that we need to focus more on. So um, just any ideas, the agenda is really up to, in a lot of ways, we want our AAG member input. So we hope that um, if you have any suggestions, suggestions that you will provide those, provide those to us. And then looking forward from October till next June, we um, have a number of different activities here set up. October, submit a letter to the, ed to the ed editor that will draft and um, get you all your local newspaper contact info so that you can submit it um, as easy, again, as easy as possible. We'll do all the, the dirty work kind of to make it as simple and as um, time effective for you guys. Support Legislative Action Week in November. We're going to do a, we've done this last couple of years as November's kind of been targeted for Legislative Action Week. Each day we have a different policy um, issue that we're advocating on behalf and we'll through adaction.org or a grassroots advocacy site, we'll have uh, letters, automatic or already written letters to members of Congress. All you have to do is type in your zip code and your address, and it will just hit send, and it will send letters of Congress on various letters to members, emails to letters of to members of Congress on various issues, and uh, we'll be doing that in November. December is going to be recruit another AAG member, so. Again, that could be someone from that contact list that you're developing for June or someone else, but we'd like to build the AAG, and I'm sure you guys, you guys obviously understand the importance, and we'd like to get more people involved on the AAG. January, attend Summit. The AD Summit is in Washington, they're in, uh, at the Gaylord National here right outside Washington, D.C., and we'd ask that you're going to record testimonial videos while you're in town. We can discuss that later, but essentially talking about the importance of AAG and advocacy and being engaged. And also in January, schedule Hill meetings. While you're in town, we'd like to get particular AAG members up to Capitol Hill to meet with their, um, to meet with their con congressional offices. February, again, support AAD PAC as 
February uh, is going to kind of be the kickoff of a major election election year there. So um, we're going to ask AD PAC support. Um, March is going to be beat the bushes for AD PAC, which essentially means let's really build uh, get the PAC going, particularly in this what's going to be a pivotal election year next year. April's register for and promote the AD Washington Flying. Um, we just completed, I think, a, what was a very successful Washington Flyin, and we'd like to drive more participation. And hopefully, all AAG members can make it this year. We had a great showing, but we'd like all of you guys to be able to come to town for the Washington Flyin. May is identify Impact 2016 candidates, and just for those of you who aren't familiar with the Impact program, it's essentially what we'd like to do is deliver our PAC support back home, back in districts by supporters of the government affairs program. So what happens is you actually either get together a local group or you get to just have a member of Congress visit your facility and you actually present them with AED PAC support there. So it kind of makes that back home connection and um, it's a very successful program. We've done over the last what, many years, predates me, but it's um, very successful and it really builds the visibility of the industry. So we'd like to have all AAG members identify an impact 2016 candidate that we can work to get a, um, an impact event together with. And June is going to be attend the fly-in. Next year we've already got on the next slide, I believe, we'll ha we have the AAG Washington fly-in um, schedule. But we've already got it scheduled for next year, so we hope that everyone will be able to join again next June. So here are the follow-up task, make, tasks. Make your grassroots list. Um, reach out to AAD. We're happy to help as necessary to make this particular grassroots list. Uh, start thinking about a facility visit and who you'd like to invite. Again, we're standing by on both of these to help you guys, to help you guys out. And then put the following dates on your calendar. AAD's Executive Forum in Chicago, in Schaumburg. September 23rd and 25th. Again, the AAG meeting will be on the on September 23rd. AAD Summit in Washington, D.C. will be at the Gaylord National, just outside D.C. on January 20th to the 22nd. And then the Washington Flying is going to be June 8th and 9th of next year. So hopefully, um, mark these on your calendar now so you can plan to join us. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. You can either type it into the message box or the best way to handle questions is type them into the question box. Okay, yeah, so if you have any questions please type the message into the question box. All right, well, looks like there aren't any questions. If uh, Josh, if you could just go to that last slide, please. And there you go. There's our Christianized contact information. You obviously know how to get a hold of us. So if you have any questions on developing your list, um, on any of the um, identifying a member of Congress for a facility visit, any of the issues or anything really policy related, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. So again, we'll conclude this call. Um, thanks again for your dedication to the uh, AAG and for your willingness to participate in the process. We'll be in touch. Thanks.